Mayor's Gary Wagner here, approximately 1045 in Honolulu, making it 345 in New York. It is Friday, finally, the 16th day of November 2012, and this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. Interesting week, mostly pressure to the downside, and that's how we'll finish the week. Currently, we're well off of the lows, low being 1704.90. As you can see, current print is 1712.30. It has had a high of 1718, and as I said, a low of about 1705. So we are trading kind of mid-range on the day to close out the week. Silver under pressure also down about 30 cents. And as you can see, current print on the screen is 32.25. It's had a low of 31.96 and a high of 32.72. To start today's show off, I kind of want to pick up where we've been leaving off over the last few days, talking about the real resistance, 1733 in gold. As you can see, we are looking at a daily chart, straight candlestick format with uh, a Fibonacci retracement. We actually have two of them. This short one is the one we kind of want to focus on for right now because that shows us this move down. This is all a component right in here of what we are calling our wave number two. Now, wave number two, not most certainly, but I think it has a high probability, of course, is, is probably going to be composed of something like, as this went down, this is going to be our A here. Market moves up, this will be our B. And then, of course, this market moving down, if it continues, will be our C. And I kind of think that's what the component will be as we look at this market unfolding and developing. I think for that reason, we might see some significant pressure in the precious mark in the precious metals markets excuse me through next week and specifically in gold silver's kind of walked into a world of its own now traders in terms of where we see absolute support and resistance points right now it's it's pretty clear and pretty easy to look at a simplified view. 1733, as we said, absolutely resistance, that's interim. That's the first level it's got to break through. After that, there's really no real resistance until you get to about 1755 to 1765. This is about 1780 here. 1755 is right about here. And that's where you'll get a secondary level of resistance. And then, of course, I believe our strongest level of resistance is here at $18. Now, what about support? Well, support right now seems to be holding fairly strong at $1,700. As you can see, we have had this market come down. I believe the intraday lows were about $1,703 and then $1,704. You can see that right here. And here on a daily chart, we have had a higher low, but we have certainly had a lower high. And so the one thing that we've talked about really all week, and it's definitely worth noting, is the body sizes, even though the market's been going down and it genuinely has, it's drifted from what, uh, 1733 to 1710, call it. So it's $23. It's not a huge swing when we think of, of past volatility and, and price ranges or daily price ranges. But look at the size of these bodies. And that's significant of a market that is really in a consolidating manner. Even though this market's consolidating down, it is in consolidation. You can see that by the length of the particular body sizes. Now, what I wanna do is take a look at our Henkin chart, and this will be our daily. And as you can see, when we look at it through this particular vantage point, these dojis really become apparent at the top. So we've had our market that had a solid rise up, our doji or pivot point, and now it appears as though this market is moving down. There can be no doubt, we have substantial, substantial resistance 
And that resistance in terms of overall resistance still sits at around 1800. And you can see we're looking at a daily chart continuous contract. These series of tops, this being our first one here, our second one right here, and of course our third one right here, this last top, there is no doubt that we've got superlative resistance in that area. It is my belief that we will not break out on top and above that particular price point until we go into our impulse wave number three. And my current count, the way I'm looking at it right now, is we're just in the throes of wave number two and the way we look at it in terms of a bigger picture is that this move down from here to here this really completed right in here this was our conclusion of a major fourth right there and then from there we started to move up I believe in terms of a intermediate count this move up right here this was our wave one we are now in wave two, however, this resolves itself. And then from two, of course, we're gonna move into three, and it's wave number three, that impulse, that is really going to propel us above these tops, and these tops have been so strong that it's really gonna take that type of an impulse wave to move us above that particular price target. There can be no doubt we've got some real resistance. Now, one of the things that I talked about in the week and also on our chart disk program really was a pattern that seems to be emerging and it's simply called a cup and handle or cup with handle. And you can see it's a pretty significant pattern developed by William O'Neill, but we'll have to see really if it unfolds because what you're looking at is you have your cup right here and of course what makes it a cup is these two tops that we have or the the top of the cup and then the next thing that you'll notice is really this channel line down here and then here that is our handle and of course the belief is that we're going to see the market break out above this target this 1800 target and that's what the cup and handle would would really illustrate to us we'll have to see how it unfolds because realize when we look at the market right now it's starting to move back down but as i said if we go into a full-blown abc that cup and handle doesn't look as complete or as viable as originally believed that would kind of invalidate that pattern now I talked about another possibility just in terms of the the straight count and that possibility would be something like this you have your wave number one this of course is an intermediate and then when we go into our wave two corrective wave that's also an intermediate that's going to have a sub count to it that sub count might and I underline the word might look something like this here you've got your A, but the A is really composed of three, as you can see like that. So you've got three for A, and then the count for your counter wave or your B wave might in fact be something like this. You've got one, two, and then three, if in fact it's not terminated. And that's one very viable possibility but we have been under pressure there's no doubt about it we'll have to see how this carries through but as i said that's the other possibility in terms of how this count could unfold we are looking at a weekly chart weekly chart cash cold and what i find noteworthy in this chart and the reason we're bringing this up is simply put if we draw a a line and that line goes from these two tops here this top and this top what's really important as we saw this compression triangle which was really a descending top and pretty much a flat bottom but it was a compression nonetheless when the market traded and broke out above first of all this was 1635 that's when we first entered the market but when it broke and then broke above this and kind of stalled at this $1,800 point, 
What's important is the fact that as it came back down, at least for right now, we have support holding. And I think that that's significant because that keeps this entire pattern that we're looking at valid. Now, although silver has been under more pressure today, it's been acting a little bit different than gold has. I think that we're going to see a significant push in silver that we're probably not going to see in gold. I think they're going to start to move apart in the way that they tend to move in tandem. I don't think we're going to see that as much. And here's what I found interesting as we look at the marketplace this week. First of all, this is a 480 minute chart, but you can see when we looked at gold, gold was kind of moving down, moving down slightly, but it still was moving down. Silver, however, even though it's been moving down, has really been moving more sideways than anything else. You've got these, these series of lows that are down right in here, but as you can see, the body, the body size of these candles, let me go ahead and blow this up a little bit. You can see that the body size has remained small, but you're getting these alternating colors, even on a short-term chart. And so when we go and move to our daily chart in silver, you can see that one, this takes all the noise out, but you can see quite clearly that in gold, when we looked at that, the market, even though they were small bodies, were moving in a downward direction. Look at the last couple of trading days on a Henkin chart, and we'll convert it into a candlestick chart in a second, but they've been moving sideways, as you can see right here. And it's just as apparent when we convert our basic Japanese average chart into a standard candlestick chart, you can still see that we've had this really defined sideways movement in the market. We have tested a series of lows right in here, but as you can see, the closes have remained pretty much consistent, except for today where you can see that it moved towards the lower end of the range, but at the same time was able to close above $32 per ounce on the week. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.